What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Comic Breakdowns. Today we are covering the Marvel Summer Crossover event, Blood Hunt. This five issue limited series will cover a vampire invasion that takes over the entire Marvel Universe. Alright, let's get into it. Our story kicks off with several Marvel heroes and villains such as Cloak and Silhouette from the New Warriors who are just exploding and having this dark energy spew out of them. We have no idea what's going down but they're saying it's sun death and they give you these different timestamps. We next see this dark energy kind of covering the earth and just taking over and blotting out the sun and we get a little soliloquy from our current unknown antagonist talking about this is the day how it all began like you know this is my work it's almost done and I will complete this. I jump to New York where we see Scarlet Witch and Iron Man having a discussion about what's going on in the air and what's going on in the ground. And Scarlet Witch saying that she's seen this villain known as Blackout who is now like kind of exploding. Iron Man questions Scarlet Witch and like wait a minute he was robbing a bank and then he just kind of exploded and she's confirming yes and she's realized like all these Dark Force users so all heroes and villains that use the Dark Force have become dimensional portals and they're blotting out the sun and Iron Man's kind of like what is happening what is this for? We next jump to our street level heroes where we have Hunter's Moon, who is the other fist of Khonshu, and Tiger talking about what's happening, what's going on, and realizing that these attacks are happening all over the city. It's not just here. It's like they're hiding the sun, hiding the moon. This is some kind of mishap. This has to be an accident. And that's when they realize it is no accident. It's a trap. And that it's involving vampires. This is all intentional and meant to take out everyone. We then see that this attack is not just citywide. It's covering Italy, Nigeria, and even Canada. This is a all-out global attack. This next part is one of my favorite. We see two people running trying to escape the vampires. And one person is yelling, we can't go in this place. We'll be trespassing. And as they get inside, the vampires are burned on impact. And what do we see? None other than Doom. They are in Latveria. Doom has placed a magical border around his whole area. And saying that this will hold. And that we need to welcome our new loyal subjects with some kind of gratitude. We hop back to Brooklyn where Miles is fighting off vampires using his new electro sword that he can produce. And we see that Blade comes in for a little help and saying, look, I have to do something, but I'm going to need your help getting it done. And of course, Miles and Blade have worked together, so it's no problem. We then go to the Avengers fighting off all these vampires. We got Thor, Captain Marvel, and Black Panther. Like, what is going on? And Black Panther says, I just don't know who this is, who's doing this attack. Vision comes in with the set rep saying he's analyzed the scene and it doesn't look like Dracula is there. And Sam, Captain America, saying, yeah, this doesn't seem like Dracula is too calculated. So Wanda's like, well, who's doing this? Seems like there are vampires everywhere. They've been building their forces. When all of a sudden she's interrupted with an alert saying, I have some information you may need. And they're like, who is this? Of course, it's none other than Blade, recent Avenger, who, of course, is an expert on vampires he's like i got everything you need they lock in on my coordinates and teleport me so i can be with you all and help you out i think i can help solve this problem so they teleport blade into their new location the impossible city their current headquarters and they're like blade yo what's going on and all of a sudden they're all immobilized by some loud sonic sound that prevents them from doing anything and then somebody says the day walker couldn't make it but we'll thank you for inviting us to your location now we are introduced to our main antagonist, a group of elite vampires known as the Blood Coven. We have McGrim who can maintain psychic static, Crew and Unusual who do damage, Damas K and Smoke Eater. These are some of the craziest looking freaks and geeks you will ever see from a vampire group and I love their design. It's just all so menacing. So the second vampire to attack is my dude Smoke Eater. He injects the smoke and then grows multiple eyes and multiple limbs and just goes off on an attack. Then we see another one of them taking on the Scarlet Witch, blocking her out. And then we see the third person taking Thor and he actually penetrates and cuts his skin. The leader then tells Thor that the Damascus can cut anything as guardian flesh as well as intangible synthoid molecules such as vision. We then see Iron Man getting wrapped up in his barbed wire and he screams in agony because it's inside the suit as well. The Avengers are getting their butts handed to him. The leader then fixates on Captain America Sam Wilson and saying that you are a perfect prize for the master and that you know your death would be a symbol to everyone. And then Black Panther intervenes and kind of knocks him away. 
while Thor tries to also fight off and still getting constantly impaled. Scarlet Witch is trying to hold her own against the psychic, but she's also losing this very harsh battle. Thor then gets a little braggadocious and saying, you may have cut me, monster, but you cannot kill me. And the monster is saying, kill you? Why would I do that? That would be a waste of my time. So he then does something that no one saw coming, people. This is the ultimate. He impales Thor straight through the brain. He's like, we want to keep you. So I don't know what's happening here. Looks like Thor is officially dead. But I don't know. He may be comatose, but they are doing the worst that they have ever experienced in their life. The Avengers are done for. The Blood Coven has eventually won. And then Black Panther says, you won't take me. I'll go ahead and teleport everybody out of here. He attempts to do this, but then the, the city does not respond to him. But of course, Black Panther has a backup plan and he actually uses a, secret, uses a secret code to teleport just Captain America out because they know he's the prize. He heard the leader say that, so he wants to make sure he's gone. And as a punishment for what just happened, the main leader kind of almost impales Black Panther. And Sam is just screaming like, T'Challa, no! He sees him completely down. And the blood covering are pissed, but they are happy for what they've just done. But they really wanted to get Captain America for some strange unknown reason. We finally jumped to the Sanctum Sanctatorium. It's been like an hour and 23 minutes since this attack happened. And we see Steven and his wife Clea trying to come up with a spell that will end all of this and stop the vampires for good. They say they have an idea, but this spell that they're working on will kill every single vampire on Earth. That includes Blade. So Blade actually shows up at the doorsteps and we're like, what happened to him? He was like, I know in order to make this spell work, you need the dark hole. And as we know, Wanda is the last person with it and she consumed it. So like without this, what are you going to do? And so Blade is just kind of talking to them and seeing what their plan is. Blade tells them that this is a vampire uprising and they want to push humanity to the brink and make the blood drinkers on top. And he then goes into who is behind this, a group called The Structure. He said they're a vampire cult that was spreading their influence across the world until Moon Knight killed their leader, which actually pissed them off. So they have been using different things to kind of help this Atlantean magic, dark force magic, and there's this global uprising. And so strange and clear, like, well, what's going on? What can we do? He said it's all about these super vampires that thrive off of superhuman blood called the Blood Coven. Blade lets Clea and Strange know that the Avengers are down, and Strange replies, well, this is even more important reason to use their spell. And Blade's like, you would really do that? You would kill every vampire on Earth? And Strange is like, look, I'm a doctor. I'll cut off a limb to save the patient. So Blade's like, okay, I see where you are. He was like, I already knew that Wanda would try to use this spell, but it's not going to work. So I wasn't so sure you would go that far. He was like, you mentioned the leader called the structure. Like, who is this ma mastermind? It's not Dracula. And I'm not seeing any information on this group. He was like, who raised these children of the night? Who assembled the monsters who killed the Avengers? Who was the leader of the structure? I'm not sure. I've never heard of this person before. And we get the ultimate reveal, people. You get to find out who the leader of the structure is. Who organized this vampire coven. Who plotted this from the very beginning. Unbeknownst to anyone. And then we see a turn and boom. Blade says, it's me. He is the leader. He is behind this whole thing. And you see he has stabbed Doctor Strange through the chest with his blade. So it gets no better than this, but people. This was a shock. I'm glad to see this. And I'm happy for the Blood Hunt issue number one. This was a book that I was not sure I wanted at first. I am so glad to regret my words. We get a little backstory. We can see some of the characters here. We have Bloodstorm, who was the leader of the Blood Coven. We also get to see McGrim, who was like the psychic one who uses her powers to kind of control the psychic energy of everyone and, and absorbs all of that. And then we have something else too called the Red Band Book. So there's a separate book that's a Red Band version. We also get to see Smoke Eater. So once again, these are little extra like behind the scenes things that's in the back of the first book so we get to see how he consumes ghosts and of people and that's why he has these extra limbs and eyes because he's inhaling like the smoke of them and using that to enhance himself okay people getting back to this special edition which is actually the same price it is the red band book version of this so it is a explicit cover with explicit content here's the original cover the variant that i have and this is the other one which obviously it says inappropriate content be warned be careful so let's go into it 
at first I'm just doing a side by side in the beginning the pages are actually the same so nothing's different there but then we get to the title screen here it's a white background with the red words that's the original but then we have the red band version which is a red background with white words on it and it tells you right there it says explicit content be warned this is only for appropriate audiences so we jump into the original scene where like the vampires are taking over the world it's the same but then look here with the red band version you see the vampires with the mouth in their hand you see entrails being hanging out of people so it is graphically different once again another scene where the vampires are taking over here you see more violent stuff going on a family and a kid watching as his parents are getting torn up and blood in the water we also cut to another scene this is one where black panther teleports sam Captain America out of the Avengers place and then in the red band this is a whole new page where he's saying all of this and like whoa what's happening we see Thor completely impaled Scarlet Witch screaming in agony and in the original Black Panther just got hit with this bad guy but now his hand goes through Black Panther he's made him like a complete rag doll we also got this other scene where we see you know the final teleportation happening and everyone's screaming the blood coming has won but in this book, we also see some of that, but then we get another extra page. We get that soliloquy again about Blade saying, this is what's happening. I've been working on this. And we get to see the vampires attacking different things, the world. And we get to see humans impaled on a pike, like the flagpoles with the heads, like how they used to do the vampire. That was the end of the first one where Blade put his sword through Doctor Strange. But in the Red Band version, check it out. He is completely bisected, cut in half, people. So I hope you enjoyed this version and this breakdown of both the regular version and the explicit version of Blood Hunt Number 1. Don't forget to hit that like button. Drop a comment below to let me know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to know when new content drops just like this. Until next time, peace. If you don't have it, you are truly missing. We are talking about fiction in the world. What's up?